There's always a lot of talk, especially as we get closer to playoff time, about adjustments, about the game to game and sometimes quarter to quarter chess match that goes on between teams. And in the recent Suns Thunder game, there were some fourth quarter sequences that I thought might be kind of interesting to highlight here. This ought to be good. So some quick background on the game to that point. It was really competitive and the stars were all playing well and it had the look and feel of a pretty high level matchup. And Kevin Durant, who is probably the most individually unguardable player in the league, was doing the kinds of things he always does. Tapping into his complete arsenal, step backs, pull ups, drives, threes, the complete and bottomless bag that he has. The Thunder had used rookie Jalen Williams on Durant for most of the game, hoping that Williams' incredible seven foot two wingspan could extend up enough at least to bother Durant's jumpers just a little bit. And though Williams competed and tried, Durant is Durant, and there wasn't much stopping him. So the Thunder switch stopper Lou Dort, who was giving up seven inches on Durant, by the way, to try to use his physical, pesky style to disrupt his rhythm. And it worked. Well, I can't say any of us were surprised. Durant missed a couple he typically makes, but for the most part, Dort was able to scrap his way to some stops, and it allowed the Thunder to maintain striking distance in the game. It's been something that sometimes Durant has had issues with in the past before. Smaller defenders that are quicker and harder to beat off the dribble, that can kind of get up under him. So Durant just ends up trying to shoot over them and then it's just make or a miss. It was a good curveball for OKC to try. So the Suns adjusted. They subbed Devin Booker back in, good idea. And Dort moved over to guard him. Booker, a shooter that you just can't leave, slotted at the break, effectively taking Dort out of the play. And then they spaced Durant out to the weak side corner and Landry Shamit, another shooter you can't leave, to the strong corner. They ran high pick and roll with Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton. This completely put Aaron Wiggins, who was now on Durant, in a complete bind. He either had to stick to Durant and watch Ayton catch a lob and dunk it, or he had to help off and basically just hope Durant missed a wide open three from the corner. Wiggins helped and Durant splashed from deep. Since it worked, run it back. The Thunder moved Dort back to Durant and Wiggins over to Booker, but the Suns ran basically the exact same thing. And now Dort was pretty much in the same bind that Wiggins was before. Dort chose to help and was left also hoping Durant would miss. Dort though, because he's an insane defender, actually did an admirable job recovering and got a pretty decent contest on Durant too. But Durant made it. Didn't we do this yesterday? And guess what? The Suns ran it back again. Third time's a charm. Same setup. The Thunder are now trying Isaiah Joe on CP3 and SGA on Ayton. Giddy was on Ayton before in a super small ball lineup, which was pretty fun by the way. But now SGA is playing a full drop coverage, Rudy Gobert style on the pick and roll. Dort isn't helping at all this time, and CP3, being the magician that he is, drops a perfect pocket pass in the open space, and Aiton flies at the rim for a layup. They can't say we didn't try. Mark Dagnold had seen enough and called timeout to make the official adjustment to the adjustment. Jalen Williams was back in now, and now guarding Aiton, and the two things OKC does a little differently here is Isaiah Joe does a much better job trailing the screen to recover, which nudges CP3 into going for a lob attempt instead of that pocket pass, to which now J-Dub and his impressive seven foot two wingspan is ready for, jumping to break it up and force a turnover and a fast break run out for OKC. It was just a fun two minute sequence of a mini chess match between some very smart coaches and some really intelligent basketball players. Some of my personal favorite parts about basketball. The postseason is basically all about this kind of stuff. Games one and two often look drastically different from games four and five. So as the postseason gets underway, keep an eye out for these kinds of moments, whether it's game to game or quarter to quarter, or sometimes even possession to possession.